Nice to see you again. Yeah, great to see you too. Now, I do think it's peculiar that native food hasn't really cut through into the mainstream. It's the food that was here. It's the food that really I think we should be eating a lot more of. So what are you talking about when you say native food? What do you mean? Well, I mean, we do eat the native seafood, and I think we can easily understand that. I think the early settlers could um, approach it. So, you know, it's, uh, fish... Once they found the barramundi, who would say no? <laughs> well, and yes. the marron, so yeah. come on. So when it's, yeah. when it's delicious and they could relate it to the food they were used to eating in Europe, then I think they, they incorporated it quite simply. Uh, I think more of the, uh, the you know, the, the, the meat, so the, the land animals, so kangaroo, uh, wallaby, possum, all those things were eaten, but more out of desperation. And let's face it, they weren't really trying to learn from the first Australians uh, about what they were eating and how they were managing the land. They were really just trying to, you know, uh, build a little England. So they weren't in that, um, they weren't in a learning mode. So what's changed? Why are chefs embracing it more now? I mean, it's been a bit of a very, very long time. Yeah, look, I mean, there's been a pretty long and rich history of uh, European and Chinese and you know other Australian chefs embracing native ingredients, but it hasn't really cut through. I think we keep feeling like we're almost on a cusp of change. And, and most recently, we've had a Danish chef come to Australia and talk to us um, and, and show us some native ingredients and, and showcase them at, at Noma in Sydney, which mm. is, is doing a season there. So I think we, you know, in some ways, that's a continuation of the cultural cringe. It's like, why is there a Danish chef coming to talk to us about these native um, fruits and berries as we can see there? Uh, why is he the one fermenting kangaroo juice and serving it with crab? But at the same time, he's shining a light on it. He's changing it up. <laughs> that's, that's the difference. I mean, uh, back in colonial days, they might have shot and eaten wallaby um, out of necessity, but um, they wouldn't have been um, cooked as nicely. Well, I think even when they enjoyed it and they appreciated it, they were still waiting for you know the sheep to fatten up. Yeah, so it wasn't that way. They weren't looking yeah. for ways to incorporate it into the into the regular diet. It was seen as inferior. And mm. I think even now, if, um, I've brought you something very delicious, wallaby tail soup to try from Flower Drum. But often we still do um, perceive kangaroo as as vermin, uh, or you know the hopping rats that we don't really want hopping to eat. Rats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get um, wallaby wallaby tail stuck in my teeth for all of this morning. No, no, I? this is, this is, I know you're very sceptical about superfoods, but you know, this has got everything going on. It's got bone broth, which is, you know, that Bagel beautiful food. gelatinous meat. Uh, it cooked in a traditional Cantonese style in a double boiler. So very slow cooked to mm -hmm. just let all those beautiful juices come out. Nice broth. It's beautiful, isn't it? So goji berries are in there as well. Is it so nice watching us on TV eat food? Does it work for you? I'm Probably not with mine dribbling down my chin. <laughs> I brought you napkins Give and everything. Napkin. Yep. Because it's very sticky, isn't it? <laughs> sticky and rich. Don't, don't do it. Uh, but what I think we do quite well in Australia is in incorporate uh, different cuisines. And we've seen, you know, we adapt in our home kitchens to all kinds of flavours, Vietnamese, Mexican, mm. but why aren't we uh, there without more kakadu plums and, and perhaps beach mm. bananas and, and finger lime? Well, here's a question. Is it affordable? I mean, I have to say that the poultry shop that I shop at weekly um, has lots of kangaroo tail and sells a lot of that. And um, that's reasonably affordable. The wallaby is tremendously expensive. Yeah, and I think supply is definitely a big issue for chefs as well as for um, home cooks who might be interested in trying it. Uh, so, you know, I think as far as agriculture and native foods, there's still a long way to go. But there are some really interesting projects. So Kakadu Plum is farmed extensively in Northern Territory and, and uh, uh, WA as well. And that's an export crop. So it's, you know, doing good things for Indigenous communities who have these sort of work opportunities opportunities as well as uh, introducing Try people to the lime PK <laughs> so that's um, sometimes called lime caviar or lime yes, pearls so it sort of I don't know if you can get a nice little shot here but there's the lime that's the that's why it's called a finger lime because of the shape of it and then, then you can see the little sort of little that's kind nice of lime, limey bits that come out which are why, really why, nice why would Chinese restaurants um, be able to make the most of Australian native foods and, and, and ingredients well, I think, you know, when they look at a meat, uh, they look at the possibilities that, mm. you know, what, and where does it perhaps match on to, uh, to things that they're cooking anyway? They were, they were right on to kangaroo. I mean, yeah. the very first time I had kangaroo was in a Chinese restaurant. Oh, how and interesting. It, and it's the old kangaroo with black leather sauce. Okay, <laughs> there you but, go. But what was clever was that um, that quick fire way of cooking in the wok is actually a great way to deal with kangaroo because it's so low fat that it goes tough very quickly. Yeah, it's such a lean meat. It's yeah. only when you get to the tail that you do get those gelatinous bits yeah. that will, um, you know, uh, become a beautiful Braise. Is this samphire? So it's like samphire, but it's yeah. beach banana. So that's from the Snowy oh, okay. River, so and it's a it's Similar a coastal concept. plant. Yeah. And I think you know it looks like where seaweed. we samphire <laughs> has been used in um, English cooking for for years, of course. So. Yeah, it's something I read. Oh, I've just been reading this amazing book, um, The Oldest Food on Earth by it's John so Newton. Mm. It's really salty, isn't it? Yeah. But it's crunchy and juicy it's nice, as well. Actually. So. Um, 
one of the things I learnt from here is that some of these native Australian foods have been exported to Europe just willy-nilly. So a French chef that came to Australia actually recognised Warrigal Greens because he'd had it in his, in his backyard in the southwest of France. So I think we do find that uh, these, these ingredients you know, will travel and they'll be incorporated into cuisine wherever they go. You know, I think um, Crocodile Dundee did a lot of things for Australia, but there's that one quote in the movie that probably ruined it for native foods. Mm -hmm. You know, you can live on it, but it tastes like... Yeah, and there is that perception. Uh, I think, you know, we can do other work with cultivation of some of these ingredients to make them more palatable to, to yeah. you know, uh, the Western, um, Western diet. But perhaps we don't have to. Perhaps we can just um, enjoy new flavours. Danny, a fine editorial from you this morning in support of Native Australian well produce. Well played. Nice okay. to see you. Thanks so much. You too.